us a little video with some tips and hints before you come to Indonesia. So stuff that we would have liked to have known, some of it we did know, but we just thought we'd put together a little video on things that um, are helpful for anyone sailing to Indonesia because we've had a few people ask. Tip one. Tip one, um, language. Learning a bit of a hasa before you come here. Uh, it's really helpful, um, especially with markets, just basic communication. Cause Learn a lot your of numbers. Numbers are a yep. good one and just, just basic communication because some places don't have any English. We so. were really surprised how little English um, they had at some of the islands. So it's just really, really helpful if you at least basically know all your numbers so that you can deal with the money and obviously how to you know, be polite and say hello. and. Um, Yes. Number two, we think's handy, a bit of equipment is to have a printer um, for any documents that are needed. Um, it's been really handy for us in checking in and out. Um, you have to have lots of paperwork when you're clearing in and out of Indonesia. Nothing, so, nothing is computerised, it's all paperwork and they want copies of everything. And every person on the boat will have to have a copy of everything. So yeah. You can, there's, there's plenty of copy places, you can walk around the streets yeah. and do it, there's no problem at all. But if you are after ease, um, yeah, it's way yeah. easier if you've got it on board and you've got the space. Yeah, I definitely recommend. Yep, yeah, definitely. Have a printer. Okay, so um, boat spares, um, you can get spares over here, um, some things can be harder to find than others, for example like spark plugs and that, yep, they, you will find them here, but I would just say bring a handful of them. Otherwise it could be an all day mission. Yeah, an all day days. event to go and find a couple of spark plugs for an outboard or something. Or, um, we took oil filters, fuel filters, um, again. If you do look, you'll find them, but again, I just think it's easy to have as many spare filters, oil filters, if you've got a water maker, water cartridges, um, batteries, I don't know, little assortment of stainless steel, very limited over here, and if you do get it, it's pretty poor quality. Um, same as batteries, you, obviously you can get batteries here, but they seem to die really quick. Um, a lot of the stuff here doesn't have any quality to it, so... I definitely would get as much as, you know, spare parts and whatnot. I'd probably make, sh I'd probably set up with rechargeables um, for any of your devices anyway. But if you do purchase batteries over here, we've just found the quality is just so poor. Like, you would probably get 10% of what you would out of an Australian battery. So. So when we say batteries, like little batteries for your head torches and things like that. And... Um, computer batteries. Yeah, torches, any yeah. anything that needs batteries. If you can get rechargeable stuff definitely do that because there are batteries everywhere but they're not um, very good quality so when you're leaving your country of choice wherever you're coming from if you like other foods other than Indonesian food make sure you stock up on that uh, so I'm talking rice as long as you like something <laughs> other than rice so you can totally get rice I mean like uh, like Tin tomatoes are limited, they're in some of the bigger ports but they're quite expensive and um, olives and salsa and different kind of food, yeah, yeah. You, it's pretty limited. It's not that you can't get it, it's not that you can't make some of the items, it's just more of a convenience to stock up on those things that you do like because yeah. they can be hard to find. Yeah, so you can make everything from scratch and that's what you end up doing but if you, you know, I don't know, I wish I kind of brought more of that stuff, but we, we were really prepared. We had cheese for about three or four months because <laughs> we like cheese. Just, yeah, different foods. So whatever you're used to, if you, you might get a bit of a shock that you can't get certain things here. Um, there is definitely certain things that you can't find, but I mean, you may do. I just, yeah. just a little tip if you like, can't live without olives or you can't live without something. And if you're gonna be using a gas stove to do all this cooking with all these ingredients uh, and you are gonna run out of gas at some stage, maybe have some uh, idea on how you're gonna refill your gas bottles because um, of the Indonesian fittings. They're different to Australia. Again, you can fill it up in some of the main areas, but most won't. Um, a lot of cruisers we've met have their own decanting kit. So it's very simple. Some say it's very dangerous, but I think everyone we meet seems to do it. Um, There's a video that we've done on it as well. We so had Lee, a bit of a dodgy one, yeah. but again, if I had my time, I would have got a proper setup. From Maybe Australia. Google someone else about that. <laughs> <laughs> the but you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna run into that once you run out of gas. So yeah. So yeah. if you can work out a solution before you leave, um, come prepared with yeah. that. Uh, that would be I'd, way easier. So AIS is mandatory. You have to have that here. 
uh, upon checking in they will check uh, whether you have the unit and then they also will check whether you're transponding so a lot of the AISs are just receivers so uh, that's not acceptable um, and they will take photos and ask and check so just make sure your AIS transponds yeah it is one thing that they do check they're not the thoroughest of, of checkers yeah. <laughs> and customs but that's one thing that um, make sure that you do have because you do need that Okay, so apart from paper charts and however you roll with your navigation, I think one of the handiest things here uh, in Indonesia is satellite imagery. So whether you have OpenCPN, which is a free program, um, which uh, you can overlay uh, Google Earth images on uh, with another program called GE to Cap, which also helps uh, with getting the images from Google Earth to OpenCPN. Uh, there's SAS Planet, there's a couple of apps, Overtel, um, a few of them, but I think it's just an absolute must to have satellite imagery here because a lot of the charts are just so far out. So. And you know if you watch our other videos, yeah. we uh, learnt that the hard way. So. Yeah. so we rub the ground in one spot and yeah. <laughs> yeah, but and it's We, we double check advice. everything with satellite imagery now. Yeah. Yeah, and also all the other cruises you meet will have OpenCPN and they can give you their charts. And yeah, and OpenCPN it. seems it's a free um, software, it's open source, so um, like Sarah said, you can exchange paths and tracks and imagery and all sorts of stuff with it, so it's definitely a great little free program to learn how to use. Yeah, so get that <laughs> before you come. Anchoring over here can be a little bit tricky. So if you're plan depends on where you're going. If you're planning on heading up to Raja Ampat and definitely up the northern parts of Indonesia, you'll find that there is a lot of deep anchorages. Um, so if you, you know, you don't have enough anchor chain or enough ropes and things like that to do some tricky or dodgy anchoring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, a lot of the anchorages hard. up to the north there are, are 40 meters plus. So um, to have a reasonable scope, you'd need a fair bit of chain. But also stern tying, which we've started to do a fair bit of now. Um, it seems so you can get pretty close to the um, shore. So whether you tie off to a bommy or whether you tie off to some palm trees with some stern lines, um, yeah, plenty of line, a couple of anchors, um, yeah. Everyone asks, is it, is it necessary to have a water maker when you come to Indo? So uh, we opted to have a water maker for ease. We've met lots of cruisers along the way that don't have water makers, so it isn't necessary. But for us, we would definitely. I think as a family too, because there's four people. Yeah, it's, it's definitely know, easier. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely easier. But you can get water everywhere. Um, and they have, they give you treated, but you can buy a treat of water. Yeah, there um, is a really few right. sailors we've seen along the way that use the local wells yeah. um, and do their own testing to see the water quality and um, yeah, yeah the scratch. So totally but also, you. There is also the risk of other cruisers say that you can actually get really dirty water over here. So and the water makers um, good option to. It just avoid eliminates that. all that worry. So rather than like carting heaps of liters or heaps of big bottles out to your boat, I mean, yeah, if you can afford it, a water maker or that works for you, then yeah, we definitely recommend it. Um, yeah. But it's not necessary. You can totally cruise Indonesia without it. Yeah. Uh, visas before you come. Uh, most of you would know this. I mean, it's on Noonside. It's on all the websites when you're planning to come to Indonesia. Most of that information's out there. But we're just like, it's way easier to get a visa in Australia or wherever before you come here, um, and you can get your 60-day visa straight up. So on arrival, you won't get your 60 days. You have to no. have that prior to coming in here. So. Mm -hmm. To have your 60 days straight up is really handy. And, and check the port that you're coming into because they're all different. They all have different rules. So the immigration office um, to where you're going to check into, it depends on that if you can get uh, your 30 day and renew. Some won't let you do that. Some will just give you the 30 days and you can't renew. You have to leave Indonesia. So do a little bit of research on where you're going to check in and what your options are as well, just so you don't get stuck there too. Okay, this one's pretty obvious when you're in the tropics, but the sun, um, it is just so powerful here. Anything left outside without a cover on it um, just rots away so quick. 
Um, so yeah, I would definitely, if you're any good at sewing from just anything that's outside really, it needs a cover on it and um, just make sure you've got good, um, good sun protection, good canopy or... We've got the Iridium Go, which um, gives us our weather and communication. Um, again, we do like to get to the little remote spots, so I think it's a great little bit of gear to have. So, um, so keep an eye on the weather. weather. Um, we use the predict wind and there's, again, I won't go into that, but there's a lot of options with how you manage your weather there. Um, and yeah, just for the sake of an emergency, you can, I uh, don't know who you're going to call, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't know who we'd call, but anyway. <laughs> we don't know who's coming to rescue out here. But most islands have internet, so if you are going to stay to a main route or main villages and things like that, it's really surprising actually how little village ha villages have internet. So yeah. Um, yeah, don't worry about not having internet, we've found it nearly everywhere we've been. The internet over here, just make sure prior to leaving Australia that you do actually have your phone unlocked. Um, and apart from that, the internet here has been really good for us and we've been in some pretty remote spots. and. Um, being able to access internet really well. Yeah, and so we've had no problems with internet at all. It's everywhere. You can yeah. get a SIM card really easily and it's really cheap. What trees like? We've got electric toothbrushes, so again, try and find uh, nozzles for your electric toothbrushes. You'll find the standard brush, just little creature comforts like that. Yeah, if you've uh, got like a favourite toothpaste or you've got favourite shampoo yeah. conditioner, stock, stock up. up. I mean, this stuff is. It's common sense, but you kind of forget, like I, I know we did, we stocked up a lot of toiletries and things and we're glad we did, um, but yeah, there's a lot of things like that you're used to that you think are available everywhere that, that aren't. Bit of a funny one, but we've found uh, in Indonesia, being in the tropics, everything with an elastic in it goes. So stock up on your underpants, stock up on your swimmers because they just do not last here. Yeah. Um, and especially if you've got favourites too. Or just easier way, just don't wear them because they just fall off you anyway after a couple of months over here. That's because you've been just eating rice. <laughs> all your sunscreens and zincs and all that, again, are probably limited. So if you do have something that you really like, I'd probably stock up on that And too. we're talking if you're going to be remote, okay? So if you're going, if you're planning on going, you know, you're checking in and then you're going straight up to Lombok and Bali and all those places, they have, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can get everything there, but if you're going to go to islands that there aren't, isn't much, um, you are very limited. So yeah, stock up if you like a certain sunscreen, especially if you, um, like me, you like all the more natural products that are not found over here very often, so... Yeah, there's coconut oil, uh, there's coconut cream. I read somewhere that you can't get all of that. You can. Um, you can get a lot of things. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you can totally live. <laughs> it's totally fine. But if you have certain things that you really like, certain different teas if you like to drink, you know, herbal tea and things like that, um, they're not as common either. And yeah. Just have a really good think about what could break, what could go wrong. If you would need something that you would usually go down to the chandlery and buy, um, that, that's not really the option here. There, if you need something, it's really hard. Okay, you can sometimes you find it, sometimes you it's won't. It's probably there, but most things that you can find the quality is not there so that's yeah. a big thing it, so if you are planning on coming to indonesia and there was another question that you had for us you can write it down below and we'll try and answer that as best we can um for you uh we've been here for over six eight months eight months, eight months. <laughs> so we've learned a few lessons the hard way so we're happy to help anybody else who's coming we love indonesia and we're loving traveling through here and uh, yeah, we just wanted to put this little video together so that everybody could um, be a little bit more prepared than we were. But yeah, we hope you enjoy. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs oh, up. Give us a thumbs up! <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't already subscribed, guys, we have other chat, we have other videos, and we do vlogs, and we are traveling through Indonesia. So if you are interested, have a look at all our other videos as well. The link is just here, I think just in the description uh, for the rest of our videos. And if you want to see what we're up to right now, you can go onto our social media sites, which is Instagram and yeah. Facebook. <laughs> so
Sailing Catalpa. Lee knows all about social media, so you can check us out and follow us along there. We so appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We love you, and we will talk soon. Thank you. Bye.